Gear and traits can make you very strong in Hogwarts Legacy, but only if you know how they work and how to get the best items. Trying to decipher how gear stats work can actually be kind of confusing, especially when you're finding lower rarity gear with better stats than your higher rarity stuff. So we'll clear up how that works along with everything else you need to know about gear and traits, like how to make your character look the way you want without sacrificing good stats, and how to enhance your playstyle with traits, including my recommendations for the best ones. The primary function of gear items, besides making your character look really cool, is to boost your offense and defense stats. Three of the six items, handwear, neckwear, and cloaks and robes, always boost offense. The other three, outfit, headwear, and facewear, always boost defense. Upgrading items will give them a secondary stat, which is always the opposite of the primary one, but we'll get back to that in a second. Gear items mainly come from looting chests around the map, and you'll come across tons of them as you play. However, you have very limited inventory space for holding gear. Even worse, some chests randomly contain unidentified gear items and there's currently a bug where if you try to loot one of these while your inventory is full, the item will disappear and you'll never be able to loot it again. This is especially frustrating with legendary chests, which contain an unidentified gold legendary piece of gear. So to make sure you don't accidentally miss one of these, you'll definitely want to sell off unused gear items often, which you can do at any of the merchants around the map. You can also destroy gear in a pinch, but that's not ideal since you won't get any money. If you do need to destroy gear, try to do green items as they're worth the least amount of gold. To gain more inventory slots for gear, I highly recommend doing at least 8 Merlin Trials as soon as you can and claiming their reward in the challenges menu. I showed how to get access to Merlin Trials in my starting tips video linked below. Oh, and don't worry about losing a cool looking piece of gear when selling or destroying it. As soon as you loot a piece of gear, its cosmetic is added to a library of all the ones you've found and you can apply that look to any other piece of gear. To do so, just hover over a gear slot and hit the button to open the change appearance menu where you'll find a list of all the cosmetics you found, even if you've sold the original piece of gear. Just make sure you don't destroy or sell unidentified pieces of gear until you've brought them back to the room of requirement to reveal their cosmetics using the desk of description. Now, you'll find four rarity levels of gear, green well-appointed, blue superb, purple extraordinary, and gold legendary, each with higher maximum possible stats. However, optimizing your stats isn't as simple as just using the highest rarity gear you have. A gear piece's stats are tied to its level, and its level is actually determined by your level when you loot it. About 75% of the time, when you loot a piece of gear, it gets a level that matches yours, and its offense and defense stats scales with that level. The other 25% of the time, the item could be one or two levels below or above your own. If it's above, you'll have to wait until you reach the required level to use it. Unfortunately, gear stats are complicated a bit more because the stats at any given level are randomized a bit. For example, two blue gloves at the same level won't necessarily have the same offense stat. So because gear stats scale with the gear's level, which again depends on your level when you loot it, and are a bit randomized, you'll often find lower rarity items with better stats than higher rarity ones you already have. Oh, and if you were thinking about waiting to run your unidentified items through the desk of description until you've leveled up to make their level higher, unfortunately that doesn't work. An unidentified item's level and corresponding stats are determined when you loot it. They're just hidden from you, so identifying it won't change the stats. So here's how I recommend you handle gear. Every so often, open up the gear menu and go into each category, hovering over each piece of gear to find the one with the highest stats. Don't worry about rarity or level or what it looks like yet. Just equip the six items with the best stats. Then go ahead and adjust your appearance for each item. You can even make items invisible if you want to, so you can turn them off but still get the benefit of having the stats. To put your cloak's hood up, you can toggle that by hovering over the cloak and robes item and pressing the button shown here. Okay, now take a quick trip to a merchant, like Glad Rags and Hogsmeade, to sell off all your unused gear and clear out inventory space. Repeat this every few quests or so and you'll be in good shape to keep your stats up to date as you progress. By the way guys, if you're finding this guide helpful, leaving a like lets me know you'd like to see more content like this and it really does go a long way in helping me out. Now, there are two caveats to my gear management plan. First, even though you may find lower rarity items with better stats than higher rarity ones, it's not always best to just use the items with the highest stats. One of the major advantages of higher rarity gear is that it upgrades much better. When you upgrade a piece of gear, it will unlock the secondary stat. 
So with a cloak, for example, in addition to the primary offense stat, we'll now also get some points for defense too. Unlike the primary stat, which is tied to your level at the time of looting and is randomized a bit, the secondary stat gained through upgrading is always the same for each rarity of gear. On blue gear, the first upgrade will give you two points on the secondary stat, the second will give you six, and the third will give you 12. On purple gear, the first upgrade gives you four points, the second gives 12, and the third gives 24. And on legendary gear, you get six, 18, then 36. Upgrading only affects the secondary stat. The primary stat will always be locked at the level it was when you found the item. So when you get to the point where you want to upgrade gear, the secondary stats might make it worth it to use a higher rarity item even if its primary stat isn't quite the highest you've got. However, upgrading costs beast resources, and you probably won't have enough until you're around level 20 to 25. So until then, just equip the items with the best stats and you'll be fine. Once you do start upgrading gear, I would mainly focus on upgrading legendary gear for its better secondary stats. Upgrading blue gear is definitely a waste, and purple gear isn't really worth the investment either. Green gear can't be upgraded and it also doesn't have a trait slot, meaning you can't weave any traits onto it, and trait slots are the second caveat to my gear management plan. Traits are enhancements you can weave onto your gear items to get offensive or defensive boosts, and they come in three tiers, with tier 3 being the strongest. Blue gear items can only be equipped with tier 1 traits, indicated by their tier 1 trait slot. Purple items have a tier 2 slot, so they can take either tier 1 or 2 traits. And legendary items have a tier 3 slot, allowing them to hold any tier trait, including the most powerful tier 3 versions. Having access to those tier 3 trait slots is another reason you might consider using legendary items even if you have some lower rarity gear with slightly better stats. Now, there's a total of 75 traits in the game, 25 different ones with three tiers for each, and they're obtained three different ways. You'll get the Scorching One trait from doing a main quest called the Elf, the Knapsack, and the Loom with Deke the House Elf. An additional 24 traits come from completing challenges in your field guide. Each of the combat series challenges will give you all three tiers of the different defensive traits. You can also get the Ancient Magic traits by completing the gear upgrade challenges in the Room of Requirement card. The Ancient Magic trait is actually a pretty good one, and I showed a really easy way to get the tier 3 version early in my trait farming video which I'll link below. The 50 remaining traits, and pretty much all the really good ones, come from clearing bandit camps around the map and looting the ornate collection chests typically found in Side tents. Now unfortunately, the trait you get when looting one of these chests is randomized, so we can't map out where to find the best ones. However, I showed a trick to get around this problem in that trait farming video, so if you want to get the best traits early, you'll definitely want to check that out. And if you're missing some traits and can't seem to find any more bandit camps, keep in mind you may have forgotten to loot the camp. This little check mark on the bandit camp icons will tell you if you've looted the chest or not. Also, keep in mind that bandit camps won't show up on the map until you're close to them. For example, I was missing my last trait for a while until I realized I never discovered this bandit camp behind Marinweem. Once you've got some traits you like, you can use the loom in the room of requirement to weave them onto your gear. Traits have unlimited uses, so you can weave them onto as many gear pieces as you want, as many times as you want, as long as you have the required beast resources. Tier 1 traits always require one puff skein fur to weave, and you'll get at least one puff skein in a main quest with Deke. I wouldn't bother weaving tier 1 traits though, as they're generally pretty weak. Tier 2 require one deer recall feather, and tier 3 require one nasal fur. You can find deer recalls near a ruin southeast of the West Hogwarts Valley Flu Flame, and there's a nasal den southeast of the Central Hogwarts Valley Flu Flame. You can also find plenty of other sites for these beasts around the map. Just zoom in all the way and look around for these paw print icons. You should also know that it doesn't matter which gear pieces you weave the traits onto, and their effects will stack. So if you weave the same trait onto multiple pieces of gear, you can benefit from its particular boost even more. However, the boost provided by different traits varies a lot, and some add together while others multiply. If you want to check out exactly how how much of a boost each trait will give you and how multiple copies stack, you can check out my traits database spreadsheet linked below where I've documented all of this for every trait in the game. Shout out to my friends Paris and SFB over on Discord for helping me research the trait mechanics. And I also want to give a shout out to my fellow Ravenclaw Blahable over on Reddit who's done some excellent work digging up virtually all the game's mechanics.
mechanics. Not only did this confirm my own research on traits, but in Blahable's excellent spreadsheet, you can click through the tabs to find out how almost anything in the game works. So thank you Blahable for sharing that with the community. Now, I know most of you aren't looking to dive into a spreadsheet, so let me summarize some trait recommendations for you. Generally, you'll want to go for the offensive traits, as the defensive ones are specific to only a single enemy type. Each of the red damage spells have a trait that boosts their damage, with the tier 3 versions boosting them by 15%. So if you have a single red damage spell that you like using a lot, like Incendio, Defendo, or Bombarda, then you'll want to consider loading up on 6 copies of its associated trait. 6 copies will boost the spell's damage by about 2.3x, so more than double, which lets you hit for massive damage, especially with Incendio and Defendo. Now if you use multiple red spells often, then you might be tempted to use 2 or 3 different traits to boost each one. However, you're actually better off using 6 copies of the concentration trait, which will boost all the red damage spells by 68%. If you use only 3 copies of a damage spell trait, you'll only boost that spell by 52%. However, concentration isn't the only way to boost all your damage spells, and using the unforgivable trait is arguably even better. By loading up on 6 copies of unforgivable 3, you'll be able to boost your damage by 2.8x, almost 3 times. And this works for all types of damage, not just red damage spells. So you'll be boosting things like ancient magic throws and special attacks, damage dealt with 4 spells like Descendo and Depulso, and even your basic shots. The catch is you need to curse your targets first, marking them with a green X before the unforgivable trait will work. This can be done relatively easy though if you've unlocked the right talents, so if you're interested in leveraging this playstyle you'll want to check out my talents video linked below. Another great trait is control, which boosts the damage of the ancient magic throw. The damage multiplier given by 6 copies of the tier 3 version is huge, clocking in at almost 5x, and it's really nice to have early on because ancient magic throws are free to use as long as there are objects around to throw. Plus, ancient magic throws are easy to use and already very strong. Your ancient magic special attacks are also very strong, and we can boost them even further with the ancient magic trait. The tier 3 version boosts ancient magic damage by 60%, and 6 copies will add up to a 4.6x multiplier. And as I mentioned earlier, you can get these traits easily by completing the gear upgrade challenges. Six copies of this one is honestly overkill in most situations though, so if you want to use it, I'd recommend pairing it with a few copies of the Ancient Magic Focus trait, which boosts how quickly you charge up your Ancient Magic meter. You'll sacrifice maximum damage, but this way your Ancient Magic attacks will still be very strong and you can use them more often. Stealth players will want to consider the Ambush trait, which increases your spell damage when concealed by Disillusionment. As the description indicates, it is limited to just the Disillusionment charm, so you won't get a damage boost while using Invisible ability potions. However, I can confirm it's not limited to slottable spells, so it does boost Petrificus Totalis. Herbology lovers should check out the Fangs trait, which boosts the damage of the already strong Chinese chomping cabbages. However, at the moment, the Herbology trait, which boosts damage from all plants, is even better. A single copy of the tier 3 version of Herbology boosts plant damage by a whopping 75%, meaning you can get a 5.5x damage boost by using 6 copies of this trait. It's honestly really OP, especially when combined with the fertilizer talent that doubles the number of cabbages you can deploy. I think we'll see this change in a future update since I agree with my friend Paris that they probably forgot a decimal point here and instead of 25, 50, and 75%, the herbology traits are supposed to be 2.5, 5, and 7.5%, but it's definitely fun while it lasts. Let's jump back to gear for a moment as I know there's some of you interested in getting maximum level gear at the end of the game. The maximum offense and defense stats are 450 and these can only be achieved with level 40 legendary gear. The earliest you'll be able to find or buy level 40 gear is at level 38, but you're unlikely to find it until you're level 40 yourself, which is only possible to obtain by completing everything in your field guide, including the main story, so going for max level gear is truly a completionist's endeavor. If you're determined to get it though, then the base stat you're looking for on each piece of gear is 114, as three of these combined with the three secondary stats maxed out to 36 will give you 450. The easiest way to get max level gear is to go to Gladrag's shop in Hogsmeade and check the inventory for items with an offense or defense stat of 114. To force the shop's inventory to refresh, open the map and press your right stick on controller or F on PC. Do this four or five times in a row and the shop's inventory will refresh, giving you another shot at getting max level gear. Alright guys, those are all my tips for gear and traits in Hogwarts Legacy. If you enjoy the video or learn something new, leaving a like would be much appreciated. If you want to check out that trick for farming all the best traits early, you can find that video linked in the description. And if you want to learn how to enhance your playstyle with the best talents, aka 
skills, then you'll want to check out this video right here. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.